All right, guys. So, um, you know, these open dates always add a little strategy to it. Um, you know, you always think about the last open date. Last year, you know, we were three and two uh, heading into Fresno. Um, Fresno ended up being a heck of a team, but we didn't play very good. So with that said, uh, you know, we've altered a little bit of how we've done things, uh, probably practicing a little heavier, a little harder. Uh, and the team that we have, uh, you know, as we kind of find our way here, uh, doing some different things on offense uh, for us this year. Obviously, we need to take advantage of every second we have out there. Um, you know, defensively, continue and trying to improve, become more aggressive. So hopefully we've put the open date to good use. Um, you know, health-wise, um, you know, we've lost two really good players on defense for the season, uh, Trent Sellers and uh, Alex Hart, uh, both with knees. Uh, Trent had his surgery here a couple weeks ago. He's doing great. Uh, Alex will have his surgery early in October. Um, once they get the inflammation down and just get some range of motion back in the knee. Uh, on offense, um, Q Drennan continues to be out. Uh, he's doing a little better. Uh, we're just going to wait and be really careful with that and MRI it here in several weeks just to see where he is. Uh, Colton Gerhardt's still out with a foot. You know, he's still a, another couple weeks away. Uh, Tavaka is back, obviously. You know that by now. Um, so, um, you know, the open date came at least philosophically at a great time um, as we try to improve, uh, but we'll find out. You know, um, Liberty comes in. I'm very impressed with Liberty. Um, they remind me in a lot of ways. Uh, I wasn't in this conference at the time Boise, um, or at the time Boise really made their move in college football, but I see some similar things to Boise in that you know, they have 12 straight winning seasons at Liberty. Uh, I think they've won eight Big South championships. Um, so they've won, you know, and Boise was that. You know, Boise had won at every level as they built the program. Um, they're in a great location for players, uh, not only in Virginia, uh, all throughout that Tidewater area. You know, there's just a lot of players there. Um, you look at who they've hired um, in the athletic department. You look who their head football coach is. Um, you look what they've done facility-wise, um, the kind of crowd that's, that they get, the kind of following they have when they play on the road, from what I understand. And then most importantly, you look at, uh, as I mentioned, the winning, but you look at they beat Baylor last year in Waco. Uh, stop and think about that for a second. Obviously, this year they beat Old Dominion the first game of the season, 52 to 10. 52 to 10, they beat Old Dominion, who has really made strides in their program. And then we all know what Old Dominion did against Virginia Tech this past weekend. Um, they're a team that is well coached. Uh, they've been in that scheme of offense now for a long time. It all starts with the quarterback. Um, he is as good as most quarterbacks were going to play. I mean that. He is a really good player, number 12. He's played a lot of football, a lot of football, a lot of big games. The receiving core, uh, number 11, uh, is a bigger receiver, a Delane Hart kind of guy that goes up and catches everything. 82 uh, is a really good receiver. He's played a lot of football. The slot number five is as good a slot as we've seen. Um, number seven. They've got two running backs. They alternate. They've got an, an offensive line that's experienced. Uh, defensively, they have a defensive end, number 54, that's played a lot. I think he, he's been a two-time all-conference pick. A defensive tackle, 55. Uh, they've got another defensive tackle in there that's big physical. Uh, they have an, a, another defensive end that we recruited that went to Liberty. Um, They've got a corner that's played since he was a freshman. They have a safety that's played a lot of football. Um, they have a new kicker. They have a new punter. Um, but it's an experienced, well-coached football team. And you don't win the kind of games they've won by upsetting people. You know, you win the kind of games they've won because of the way they're coached and 
the way they've gone about building that program. You know, this is Turner Gill's seventh year at Liberty and their first year in FBS. Uh, they play a heck of a schedule as the season goes on. So um, we, we know what kind of game this is going to be. You know, in a lot of ways to me, this starts, and I told our players this this morning, you know, this starts Mountain West Conference play to me because this is absolutely a Mountain West Conference team coming in here with a really good quarterback and really good receivers and the confidence that they know what it takes to win big games. So um, again, you know, I've talked a lot about Liberty. Always the focus is on us. Uh, we have to get better. We know that. Uh, we know that. Um, you know, you think back uh, to Las Cruces, you think of all the mistakes made in that game. Uh, but the encouraging part was we won the game. We won the game. And we responded and created some turnovers on defense. Uh, did enough on offense. And we got through it. And now we've got a quarterback that's no longer the third quarterback because he's played in games. Uh, we've got our quarterback that was the starter to start the season back healthy. Um, so, you know, again, it's all about us. So, you guys want to start the questions? Henry? Coach, objectively, the strength of your football team right now, and on the other side, the weakness or vulnerability of your team right now. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's a, a very appropriate question because after three games, particularly with the open date, that's what you really do. You know, you try to figure out how to play to what you think your strengths are and how to improve on what maybe your liabilities are. Um, I, I think on offense, our liability would be that we're not as experienced um, as a liberty would be in the passing game, um, in the suddenness of reads, um, playing as fast as we're capable as because we're doing some relatively new things for us as we transition into being a truly balanced offense. Um, the positives on offense, I think we're athletic. Uh, I think we have some playmakers. Uh, I think we have a really good scheme. Uh, and I think the best is ahead for us. But we're not clicking yet like I know we're capable of clicking. But this week of practice has been invaluable for us to just build on what our core of things we can do are. Um, defensively, I think we've helped ourselves in coverage a little bit. Um, we haven't played as aggressive or as sudden as I would have liked on defense. Um, but I look at who we've played. Uh, I think Incarnate Word is a good offensive team. I really do. You know, they're as good as a lot of teams we're going to play this year. Wisconsin, it was a different kind of game. Um, you know, with Trent Sellers out, who was arguably our most physical defensive end, and with Alex Hart out, you know, we've had to, you know, we've got to find some leadership from some different areas. But I think the best is ahead for us on defense if we don't lose any more players. Special teams, we've not had any wild plays, but we've played pretty good technique. We've had pretty good urgency in special teams. You know, only us and Boston College are the only two teams in the country, I think, that haven't attempted a field goal. But I think we have a good field goal kicker. Um, I, we have a punter now that we didn't know what he was going to be. I think he's pretty good. He can do both the rugby and the um, pocket punt. We found a punt returner, although he's not a oh wow every time. I think he's pretty consistent. We haven't had a chance to have any kickoff returns yet just due to some different things. Uh, so I could keep going. Um, but if you ask me the positive of our team overall, if I just got it down to one thing, it's what I said before New Mexico State in that I like this team. I like these players. I like the atmosphere we have. I think we know exactly what we are. Uh, we know there's not a whole lot of margin for error week to week. We know we have to improve. And it's been an absolute pleasure to coach this team, an absolute pleasure. So that's our, that's our positive. Coach, you had another day to look at your quarterbacks. Is Sharon still looking like he might be the guy? Or? You know, I think uh, Tavaka absolutely improved today. Uh, you could tell he was kind of getting back into a rhythm. Um, you know, we're going to be the same scheme on offense, whether it's Sharon or Tavaka. Uh, we feel like Sharon has made improvement, um, where if he does play, we won't be quite so conservative um, with him. 
uh, if that means doing some triple option stuff, if that means throwing it a little more on the RPOs and getting it out. Um, so I think it's probably even right now, and I think we'll make the decision here tomorrow. Uh, you know, we haven't backed off practice at all, and tomorrow's going to be another full padded day. But definitely Tavaka, I think, um, showed a little more rhythm today in the way he practiced, which was encouraging. Did Tavaka end up playing, Coach? How do you coach him coming off a concussion to be aggressive and make plays, but also you know, be cautious and try not to get hurt? You know, I think, that's a, um, I think that's a realistic question that probably Tavaka could answer better for himself. You know, I happened to see him interviewed yesterday uh, where he talked about all of a sudden that reality when you don't have football, how much you love football and you love the game of football. Uh, again, it's real. Uh, you know, there's no minimizing what has happened with him. Um, as far as how we call plays, I don't think much is going to change. Uh, so, um, you know, again, it's one of those things that you hope, uh, you know, last year he had one early in the season and he came back and played the rest of the season. Um, so I don't think it's going to impact us. Uh, I think that's something you're probably better off asking him. I know he loves football. He's a tremendous competitor. Um, but it is real. It, it is real, the fact that he had a concussion last year, symptoms, and he's had a concussion this year. So I, I don't minimize that, and I don't really have the answer for that. You know, that, that's something that he has to address. Um, but I know he is excited as heck to get back out there, and he looks like he's back to himself. Based on your history of using multiple quarterbacks, did you in the week revisit the thought of maybe using two quarterbacks in the game? I don't want to. You know, our offense is such a rhythm offense. It's such a rhythm offense, you know. Um, you know, in the past with the triple stuff, it was a little different, you know, to rotate guys in there. I, I just feel like this offense with the tempo piece, with the RPOs, man, you have to get into a rhythm. And, and that's one of the reasons that I tweaked our offense this year was because we had players that never could get into a rhythm unless it was the quarterback or our tailback with what we did in the past when we were triple almost exclusively. You know, it's about getting everybody on that field in a rhythm. And I think by having the same quarterback out there over and over, you're able to do that. You know, we were in a great rhythm against Wisconsin right off the bat. And I really believe we'd have continued to do that. We were in a really good rhythm against Incarnate Word. Um, we lost our rhythm a little bit. So I would rather just play one, and I think this offense is a little bit different than our past offense, that I think it's more of an advantage to play one. Coach, you already have more picks than you had all of last season. Do you think that because you guys changed your offensive scheme and you throw the ball in practice, it helped that much, or is it just different in the job? No, I started coaching those DBs myself as well. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but now since you brought it up, let's let the cats out of the bag. Now I'm, I'm coaching the secondary this year. No, I'm just, I'm just teasing. Um, you know, I think it is all about who you put out there on that field, quite honestly. Uh, you know, we've talked about it all week. You know, I started this off back to Henry's question about, you know, what are our potential strengths? And with defense, I think it's putting guys out there with ball skills, if you look at it. I go Jalen Burrell, D'Angelo Ross, um, you know, Marcus Hayes, obviously, uh, right on down the line. We, we've got some DBs with some ball skills now. Um, a lot of those guys played receiver. Um, so I, I think it, it's, it's more about that, you know, but hopefully the trend continues. Um, this kid's not easy to def defend. You know, he really makes smart decisions. It's really hard to get pressure on him. Uh, they've got big receivers at a couple spots. They've got quick receivers at other spots. Uh, so I think it's just, I think we've got a pretty good group of DBs that are receiver type guys at heart. And that's so important, you know, to go play the ball. Coach, you've said it a couple different times uh, that it's more important to know yourself than it is to know your opponent. Um, through three games, uh, tell us something that you know for sure about your team and maybe something that's unknown. I think they want to win. I think it's really important to them. I think they're really excited and happy in our schemes. By that I mean, you know, every day you go out there, you feel such a momentum thing that kids want to learn. You know, they're not bored with it. 
where I think a year ago, as much success as we had with the triple piece of it, I think we got a little bored with it and we got a little stale with it. So there's a tremendous environment to learn. And it's easier to practice against each other more in practice, offense and defense, because we're more aligned offensively with who the other teams we're going to play are. So from that standpoint, just the atmosphere every day is so competitive and such a sense of kids wanting to learn and get better. And to me, that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I know our liabilities. I know each week we're going to scratch and claw for every win. Um, but it's, it's, it's a feeling like the best is coming because of the energy created, I think, by schematically they're excited. And I think last year, such a bad taste in their mouth. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, it really is a, a really a positive environment day to day to coach. And I appreciate that so much. How does losing Alex Hart now from that defense, how does that going to change, you know, kind of the way that you approach the defense and what sort of adjustments? Are yeah, you it's a concern. It's a concern. I mean, Alex was Alex. Alex was Dakota Cox. You know, he was that guy that, um, first of all, was a heck of a player and productive, but just as important, got everybody lined up. I mean, there was no panic in him. You know, he was as even keeled first play of the game to the 85th play of the game. He was the guy that was always that voice of reason and made those calls. And that's, I don't minimize that. You know, I really like Eva. I can pronounce Eva's last name, Eva Toey. Then I'm going to go with City and Mo on the other two and let you guys figure those two out how to pronounce them. Those guys are tough. They are athletic. They're powerful guys. Getting lined up, though, is a concern to me right now. And just being for us to be able to keep even keel through the game. You know, coaches aren't out there on the field. You know, when bad things start happening or good things start happening, all of a sudden there's no Alex Hart. You know, I go back to the end of the New Mexico State game. I'm, I'm not saying that the penalties at the end of the game on defense. We had two of them at the end of the New Mexico State game that potentially kept us from winning that game. Both defensive penalties. So, you know, the leadership piece of this. But with that said, the same thing I'm telling you, those kids could already tell you. So there's a tremendous urgency that that void's been created. You know, you and I aren't the only one that knows that. Those kids know that. So, but that's reality. That's, that's reality, you know, and that he, he's provided a, a whole lot to us. I mean, he is that coach on the field who's not, not out there now. So guys have to step up. Guys have to step up. You have two questions. Uh, you, got, you got your homecoming game this Saturday. Why should fans come to the game? And then also, what do you think of that race at the end of the practice today? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the first question is, um, you know, I've never been one to try to tell fans what to do just because the coach is supposed to coach and coach your team. You know, if I was a fan, and I am a fan of college football, I just look at the weather this week, what it's going to be. You know, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon when it's 82 or 83 degrees and then by 5.30, it doesn't get any better than the weather in this, country, in this part of the country now that we've gotten through the real heat. Second thing, I'm excited about our team and the playmakers on offense um, and the potential we have on defense because we did intercept five balls down in Las Cruces. We are kind of an exciting team to watch. Third, we need you. We need you. You know, we're two and one right now. We're, we're going to scratch and claw for everything we get. Um, you know, I just watched Liberty on tape, and I see Liberty Stadium full of people. Um, you know, but again, man, you, you got to coach your team. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell people what to do. I mean, but hopefully they can look at us and feel encouraged that the best is ahead for us. And it's college football. I mean, it's college football in Albuquerque, New Mexico for the price you're going to pay to go, not much else you could do at that price with your family. So, I mean, I'd say, why not? You know, why, why not come out? You know, but hopefully somebody else can write that narrative for me that cares about football in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You know, I don't want to look like I have a agenda with it. You know, I want to coach my team. Steve, you have a back end of that question. What did you think of that race? Oh, we had a little race after practice. Um, you know, Langston Murray at about 3.30 pounds, I'm talking about. Not 3.30 on the clock, but 3.30. <laughs> he wrote a check saying he could 
beat Aaron Jenkins in the 40 or wanted to challenge it. And this was before practice. So I don't forget. So I heard that chirping going on out there. So I said, let's see if you can, you wrote the check now, let's see if you can cash it. And by the way, Aaron Jenkins beat him in the 40. So not only did he not cash that, pay that check, he defaulted on that check. So it was a double <laughs> loss for Langston Murray because he was the one that wrote the check. But it wasn't a thing of beauty. It was 330 rushing, run, running against about 310. And you got to see it live and in person. And I think, did both of them have their shirts off? Yes. Yeah, so you got the whole, <laughs> you got the whole nature of the essence of what that was as that came towards you down there. Yeah. All right, guys. Coach, as you know, yesterday we lost probably the greatest football player ever come out of the Albuquerque metro area, Tom McDonald. As Vince Lombardi said, if I had 11 Tom McDonald's, I would never lose a championship game. So my question to you, Tom McDonald's signature trademark was when he got hit, he jumped up like the energized bunny and ran to the huddle, and act like there was no, you know, like he wasn't hurt. And my question is, do we have a player on this roster that exemplifies the Tommy McDonald style play where he plays his last play like it's the last game? A lot of them. We have a lot of them. We got a lot of great kids in this program, a lot of tough suckers that know how to play the game the right way, and absolutely we do. Coach? Uh, with a little different spin on the homecoming question. Um, one of the things you mentioned after the opener was how great it was to see the student section filled and to see them spilling into another area of the stands because there were so many students. Um, the prospects that that could happen again on Saturday with homecoming and your thoughts on the students and the way they've been supported. Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, I think back to our um, incarnate word game. Now, that was a long time ago, but now I do remember how important that student body was and how good that looked. It was full. Then the second thing I think back to is down at Las Cruces, the turnout we had and the representation we had and the team going over to the band after that game. Those are precious moments. So again, it's four o'clock Saturday afternoon. You know, our student body has really been supportive of us. Um, and one thing I can always count on is that band being there. Man, I don't underestimate the band. You know, I played the tuba. Uh, I started out playing the trumpet in the fourth grade. And that's back when, you know, you used to take those music tests. But I really think that was just a way to send something home to your parents that said, your son is really, really has a great future musically to get you to buy the trumpet. So I started out in the trumpet. By ninth grade, I was in the t playing the tuba. Uh, my wife, Joanne, was actually a majorette. You know, the tuba guys always get the best looking girls. That continues now. <laughs> but back again, she played the flute and then she transitioned into being a majorette. So I really appreciate our band. I really appreciate our band and uh, also our student body. We good, guys? Sure. Question I was going to ask is his question because I sit where the students are. There must have been 3,000 students here at Jardine, which really made it nice on our side. But the question I had is your receivers, it seems like if you, if you notice, you've got a guy that's running one for 60, another one for 50, another for 40, and a bunch 30 yard uh, after they catch the ball. So you must be pretty happy with the receivers and what they can do and how exciting they've been to. Yeah, like I think that's, that's a great question. My, I go back to the point of, again, what's our strengths and our weaknesses. Right now, I still don't think as a receiver group, we're cutting it loose and running as precise routes and doing things as um, where it's just reaction because we haven't done a lot of changing the routes based on the coverage. We just didn't do that in our world here. But that group is talented. That group is talented. Um, you know, New Mexico State, we didn't get to show a whole lot just because of the nature of that game and just some different dynamics. I'm really anxious to see after this two weeks of practice how much our receiver group can come on, both carrying the ball um, because, you know, triple option is still such a big part schematically of what we're going to be able to do. But even in the RPO game and throwing the ball down the field. So we've got some talent there. You know, we've got some little slots that can run. And we've got some bigger receivers on the outside. Um, so it's, it's kind of exciting, you know. And I, I do think it's exciting to watch the, the kind of evolution of that group. They're pretty good. Okay? All right, man. Thank you.